If you're a student wanting to make a game, should you go to game dev school? Or if you're in college, should you drop out to begin your game dev journey? I had the honor of chatting with Scott Miller, the mind behind what I would call the first independent games, Wolfenstein 3D and Duke Nukem. Stick around because Scott's going to tell us his story of starting a game studio despite those around him telling him to finish college. Should I keep going to college or should I build a studio? Um, because I just made 20 grand, that's sort of a proof of concept, but I just stuck with it through college and got a degree that I really hated. And I'm curious about your story because it's it's kind of like similar to mine, but you made a different decision. So while I was going to college, I was making these games. And so they would pay a couple hundred dollars for these things, and but they wouldn't take your rights. They would only like want them exclusively, exclusively for one year. I, I can make some more money out of these, I think, but I didn't know how. I didn't, you know, the retailer, uh, re, you know, retail publishers wouldn't return my my letters, uh, you know, you didn't email people back then, you sent them letters. So I decided to um, release a couple of my games online on BBS's. I had two text adventures that I released, and I released the full game and uh, asked for people to send me some money if they liked it, and I hardly get any checks at all. And then I had these cross games, I had these three cross games, um, and I decided to try something new, and I released just one of them to uh, BBS systems and I, I asked people uh, at the end, there was an ending stream and he finished it. If you yeah. like this, send me um, some money. I forget what it was, 20 or $30. And I'll send you the other two episodes, which each contain like 20 levels each or something. And that that was the secret that that actually worked. You know, people won't pay for what they already have in their hand, but they'll pay for something extra that they will, they will get. So that really started to work. And for like a year, um, I, I started, you know, checks just start coming in the mail. And think about how hard it is for someone to write a check and send the mail. And yet, you know, I made over $100,000 that first year. And in college. I kind of knew I, I kind of knew I was onto something. And um, I was, you know, a <laughs> senior. I was a senior in college at this time. You know, and $100,000 back in 1990 is probably 200, $250,000 now. So it's yeah, like quite a bit of money. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, was, I knew I was onto something, so I was like, you know, do I finish my senior year? I think I was, I had like a semester and a half to go. And I, I just said, I said, you know, this is too big. I think I'm onto something. I need to drop out and see what I can do here. And, uh, you know, my friends were all like, Scott, man, you're crazy. You know, <laughs> finish, finish your degree at least now. And I was like, I, you know, I, I remember talking to them, you know, I, I can always come back if this doesn't work out. You know, it's I'm yeah. not that big of a deal. So, um, so I, I, I quit and made this yeah. my first full-time gig. And within a year, all my friends were working for me. So it totally <laughs> worked out. <laughs> totally worked out. Were you going to school for um, code? A or? Computer, computer science degree. Uh -huh. Okay. Like a lot of my audience, they're students in high school and they're wondering, should I go to college to get a degree in computer science or <laughs> like game design? And, you know, I, I tell them... It depends on what your goals are. Do you want to be in AAA or are you an entrepreneur? Are you a self-starter or do you like to sort of get led by somebody else? And just curious, any advice you have about that? I'm always scared to give my advice because I'm afraid to send people down a bad path that they, that they may regret because it really is a very personal decision. But I will say that in all the time we've ever hired anyone, We've never cared if they've had a degree or not. That's yeah. never a question we ask. Never. We just simply look for, you know, their, you know, a display of their talent. You know, if they're an artist, let's see some art. If they're a coder, let's see some samples of code. If you're a modeler, let's see your models. It never even occurs to me to ask, do you have a degree or not? It just doesn't even occur to me. Yeah. Um, for a lot of studios, that's how it is. Now, like you said, for AAA studios and stuff, they be they may be more concerned, especially if you're going for like marketing, for instance, stuff like that. I think mm -hmm. you know it's reasonable to expect to have a degree. But if you're a good coder, you're going to get hired. Yeah. You know, just based on you know demos that you've put together that really display your talents. Um, right. Maybe if you're not a good coder, then you need to go to school and. and Get, get that kind of training and, and build up your craft and so on. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very, you know, it's, it's, it's really, my advice is it's, uh, it's not universal. You, you really have to weigh, you know, the pros and cons for, for yourself. Um, okay. But I'm just saying in our case, 
a degree doesn't matter at all. You just don't. Yeah, you you won't look at the degree. Like it's you haven't even like asked for. Never have you been asked. Yeah. Never. Yeah. I mean, I tend to agree. Like I have a small team. I just like anytime I get an email from somebody saying, "Hey, I want to work with you guys," I just say, "Where's the portfolio?" Like yeah. that's really what I'm looking for. I just want to know if you're good or not. That's that's all I really care about. But I do wonder: is there? A